Hi, Hannes. Greg here. Ah, hi, Greg. So can you tell me a little bit about the, the sonata? Yeah, the sonata, it's the small sister of the symphonia, and yeah, there are lots of similarities. Yeah, I could see that when I was playing with it on the hill. What do you think sets it apart? Every marketing guy needs something unique of a single thing because it's a marketing feature. Yeah. So I see that, that shouldn't be the goal. The goal should be that the, pro the product should be really, really suitable and really, really good. So I don't think in marketing ways, I think in technical ways. And the whole combination makes makes her unique but she has she has some technical entities which you didn't see somewhere somewhere before like as we did the symphonia we, we've seen that the small sizes they have different air foils so, so symphonia 20 and 18 they have different air foils and the as the bigger sizes and the air foils were great so we, we got the, the samples 20 and 18 which is normally tricky to certify those a and a yeah and it immediately worked with the airfoil the center airfoil the wingtip airfoil is the same as the symphonia it stayed the same and then we said wow and then we used this airfoil for the sonata protos and it was bingo perfect we had also on the you see the suspensions when you have a look in the intake they're different uh, on the a then on the Symphonia, on the Symphonia we have this round uh, tree lung reinforcement, which is reducing the wrinkles. And the Sonata has the, the stick, just one stick in the, in, on the top, and it's uh, leading back to the top of the suspensions, yeah. which is reducing the wrinkles. And it has, uh, which is normally only on the tandems, you have these diagonal glued reinforcements on the airfoils, 45 degrees in front and 45 degrees back of the suspension. You normally don't do that. It's just because if we want to have the guider lasting really long, we want to avoid the diagonal stretching of the profile class. As well as it has the sliced diagonals, which are not very, very, very common in the A class, because you need a clean aerodynamic to have very late detaching of airstream and it's the performance still good and so on. But I, I love the class, the 30D. You know, it has a very nice stretching behavior, but it's it's not so trendy to build a guider full out of it because it's, the guider is getting quite heavy. But for the Sonata, we're going the ways that we have the normal version now, which is on the market. And there will be a light version called uh, Viola. A different name because it will be a, a mountaineer oriented uh, light version and some mountaineers may have problems to fly with the school glider but it's uh, a light version of the sonata and there we use the really light uh, uh, 27 clothes all the lines are technora so they have no stretching when you when you remeasure it when you compare the measure the, the sheets new wing after our tests, after the DHV tests, it's, it's nothing, so no changes. Because we have left away the DSL-70. Normally you have the DSL-70 denima line in the short elements. And yeah. they're still they're re not really stable, they're always moving around. I played around a little bit with the, the collapse recovery. Um, it's certainly amazing in terms of uh, not having any energy. It's, um, you know, if you do an asymmetric or a front collapse or something, it, it reinflates without any any energy. The challenge to, to um, manage a very good result in this DHV safety test. And so we have to go more uh, as so even bigger sizes and, and more brood testing as, for, as asked in the EN tests. And the goal was to build a guider which will uh, set a new standard in the safety class. It's difficult to build a school glider because when you come to a school with a new wing and you as a sales guy are telling the teacher, yeah, now everything is better, the teacher will tell you I'm not interested because I have the glider I know in every detail and I trust it and I don't need something new because every new thing is a risk. We managed to build the Filu in 94. 
Yeah, so when you fly it nowadays, you, <laughs> you use it. It's horrible. <laughs> it's, because it was the legendary glider flying straight out after collapses. And so the, we were selling it from 94 to 2000, and it was the standard school glider in, in Germany, Austria, everywhere. And we need something of that kind for the future, again, yeah. for the five to 10 years, the standard school glider. So the goal is to have a really, really good thing, which you can maybe improve with very small details to get to perfection. But I think pilots that aren't, uh, you know, not students could be buying the wing and enjoying it immensely because it's it's very enjoyable to fly and quite adequate for flying even cross country. Um, you know, ah, yeah, so I was, we do it, yeah, just it's it's good in service. So it it has not the final kick in the handling as the as the Symphonia has, but it makes easier to climb very efficiently. Yeah, because yeah. it. Yeah, you're not doing any you, m- uh, management of the of the pitch. It's just yeah, and then oh. you found you find yourself quite quite high among the gaggle. Aha, uh-huh, nice. And then in transitions, you, you step in the in the in the gas and you oh, it's getting really faster. And performance is it's still good. When you do some maneuvers, you say wow, and so you think do you know, for lots of people, why not? <laughs> so not only in schooling, also afterwards. Looking forward to what you're going to do in the the B class because um, you've produced two v- very good wings in yeah, the, the A, A class. So Tenor, be the Tenor is certified in 21 and 25, and we're expecting the first pieces in week 21. I'm just writing the info. My basic claim always when I'm presenting a new wing in a class, I want to be sure that it's the best performing wing in that class. If I'm not sure, I will not publish it. No, that's brilliant, Hannes. I've got a lot of insight. It's been really useful. So thanks very much. 